Many times when you prepare a dashboard for management, they will bombard you with questions such as what is the year to date number, what is the MTD number, what happened in the last 6 months and so on. Unfortunately, there is no automatic way to filter your pivot for those numbers, but in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy trick to achieve this result and you can apply it to your situation. So let's go. I have some data and I want to insert a pivot table. So just click inside, Ctrl A, select those three empty columns also. They are not for decoration. You will see we're gonna use them. Let's go for insert, pivot table, existing worksheet click on this arrow and put it here press enter press enter you get it let's add the items let's add the sales and there we go i'm not gonna do the cosmetics because we have a lesson on this so you can check it out or download the completed workbook what i want to do is copy this data put it here it's another pivot table remove the items and put here the date now once you put the date, you get a surprise, you are getting the quarters, the months, etc. Obviously you can get rid of the quarters like this. Or another trick is right click, group, and under group you can group the dates by a lot of things that could be useful for you. Let's remove the quarters and keep the months and the years. Press OK, there we go. Now the other trick that you can do is below this video, there is an option to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Please do it, that would be awesome. Let's go back to our data sheet. And the trick is I'm gonna use three helper columns to identify data point by data point whether it should be included in YTD, MTD or six months full. And based on this, I can use a slicer. Now, in order to achieve that, I need a start date and an end date, and I can compare every date to those two dates. Let's start by getting today's date. If you don't know, you can use a formula called today, open close parenthesis, press enter. We are on the 29th of May 2023. Now, the start date should be the 1st of Jan 2023, but I want it to be dynamic because what if you are now in the future with flying cars and you want to come back to this Excel, it has to work automatically. So what we could do is use a date formula. So equal date, open parenthesis, you have year, months and day. For the year, I can use a year formula and extract the year from today, close parenthesis, comma, the months will be January, so one and the day will be the first. That will never change, I can hard code them. Close parenthesis, press enter, there we go. For the 31st of December, it is the same technique. So I can just drag this formula and change it. So I'm just gonna refer to today. And here it will be months 12 and 31st. Press enter, there we go. So now I just need an if formula. So I just go up equal if open parenthesis and here i need two conditions the date has to be bigger or equal than the start date and smaller or equal than the end date so for this i can use and we take the date smaller or equal than the end date let's use f4 to make it absolute and let's do the same here bigger or equal than the start date f4 close parenthesis now, if it's true, let's write YTD. If it's not true, let's write not YTD. Close parenthesis. Double click, you get everything. Now, that's the first one. Let me show you the second one because it's a different methodology. For the second one, the management will come and tell you, we are on the 14th, for example, today. What was the sales from the 1st to the 14th for previous months? two months ago and so on. So to do this, we are gonna extract today's day. I'm gonna use equal day of today. Close parenthesis, press enter. We are on the 29th, that's dynamic. And here we are gonna use an if formula. So if the day of this date is smaller or equal than 29, and we need to use F4 here, it will be MTD 
otherwise it will be not MTD. Let's close parentheses, double click. You can see that this one is 31st, bigger than 29. It's not MTD. And finally, we have the past six months. Now the past six months, we are in May. I don't want to include May in my scenario. I want to end on the 30th of April and take six months before. How to do this? Let's start with the end date. My problem is the end of the month could be 30th, 31st, 29th, 28th. It's crazy. So what do I do? What I could do here is take my 29th of May and convert it to the 1st of May. So to do this, I'm just going to use date, year of 29 of May, comma, months of 29 of May, and one for the first day. So you get the 1st of May. And all this, I can subtract one day, 30th of April. So no matter what happens, I'm going to get the last day of the previous month. Now the start date is a bit more cumbersome. So let's try it. We're going to do equal date. We're going to get the year of today, comma, the month of today, comma, and I want the first. So that will get me the first of May of this year. Now, if I come inside it, and remove six months, I get the 1st of November 2022. What has happened here? This is 5, because the month is 5, minus 6, it's minus 1. Now, Excel knows automatically that if I have a minus 1 in the month, it will go to the last year, so that will be 2022, and it will take 12 months and subtract 1, it will become 11, and this works. Now we can implement the same kind of if formula here, equal if open parenthesis, and this date is smaller or equal than the end date. Let's use F4, comma, the same date bigger or equal than the first date, F4, close parenthesis, comma, 6M, comma, not 6M, close parenthesis, press enter, and here I'm just going to capitalize this, it's better. Let's be consistent. And let's double click and get everything. Perfect. Now I have everything, all the flags. I can come here to my dashboard and add a slicer. I'm going to show you the first one and do the other two slices very quickly. So for the first one, we just click here, right click, and we add YTD as a slicer. This is my slicer, it looks empty, you're gonna get scared, but just right click here and refresh, you get everything. Now, if you want to get rid of this blank, you just right click here, slicer settings, and you hide items with no data. There we go. Now, the other thing that you need to check is whether it works on both tables. In this case, this one is changing, but this one is not, and we don't want to get fired. So we just right click, report connections, and we select the second table also. There we go, works like a charm. Let me do the other two very quickly, it's the same methodology. There we go, I just cleared the filter, and now if you do MTD, the numbers will change. If you do the last six months, everything will update again.